welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. I want to talk today about some things that came up around promotion on a long walk up at Sea Ranch I had with a good friend of mine. We talked about getting galleries, the difficulty of that, the necessity of that, how to do that. We talked about how important it is to get your work really strong or uh, the tendency sometimes to over-focus on making something that's already great even better and how that can be questionably a good use of your time or not. And then we talked about audiences, uh, people who follow, you know, followers and building that following up and does that work and all, yeah. So anyway, I, I want to go over that, but I want to sort of frame this conversation in as, I, as we did and, and as I kind of w- took those subjects and, and I, because it all relates, they come back, all those, all that, uh, all those questions around promotion, making strong art, uh, it, it all circulates around two primary ideas. And um, I believe they're truths. <laughs> I believe these. This is how I uh, coach. It's how I make my art. Uh, it's it's a kind of a, a through line for me when I get stuck. So the, the first point is that everybody wants to feel more alive. It doesn't matter. And, and, and the form of that, whether we go to thrilling movies, or we love to go horseback riding, or we get tired of where we live <laughs> and we move, um, we buy new clothes, we have inspiring conversations with people we meet at a party, we go to parties to have those encounters with people that we might not normally have. It's kind of everything, you know, that you sort of look at that and you can't, there, there's no culture that doesn't uh, embody this, that doesn't demonstrate this, doesn't, it has nothing to do with where in the world you look or uh, any, anything or what, where you're from, uh, who you know, or whether you're an artist or a business person, it's all, uh, it's all about that energy. You might get that if you're an artist from making something or looking at something. I just recently went to the museum and it was amazing. I mean, I hadn't been for a while and it was so good. It was just like the best afternoon. Now, for a lot of people, maybe that wouldn't be great for them. But if you're a mathematician, you would love to go to the library or whatever the thing is. So if you get that, that that's what everyone wants that, when they experience that in your work, when you make work that's personal and authentic, um, that's the currency. That's the value you're bringing to the world. That's why it's so important. That's why all my programs, everything I'm teaching is getting you to find more and more of who you are and how what you want to make. It's important that you need to answer that question of what brings you alive in your art, right? So you can chase that down. It's not always readily obvious, but by making art over time, you can determine that and the work gets better and better. I mean, that's why the work gets better in general, the further we go, right? Someone who's been making art a long time, the work just gets better and more personal and stronger um, over time. The second question, and this really has to do with you know, the buying audience, the, the, anybody who's coming, anyone you show something to, anyone you're looking to share anything with, that, that people are uh, asking themselves, uh, they're coming with this question that what's in this for me? Or why does this does this bring me alive actually? But you know, what is it? Is there something here for me? I've had my art in different places. I have shown my work in different places, especially just starting out. And in the beginning, like any place, you know, the sandwich store, and it wasn't such a good spot because people, the, the people that are there are not interested in what I'm doing. They're not, 
they're not even asking themselves questions around, you know, do I like this kind of art? They're not even really even seeing it. If you can realize that everyone wants to understand or get something, feel something from you, then you can start um, making sure that you answer that question a little bit, that you put the work out there that is more personal, even if it's scary or even if it, you're not as confident with it. If it's work that is more like you and different, it will land better. Uh, if you're trying to uh, promote something, you need to meet people, you know, where they are, where that are, what do people want? In this case, you know, um, I know that I'm talking to, to people that are like me trying to make art. And so I'm trying to share things that would be helpful, right? Like that's, that's a direct, I mean, I think about that all the time. Is what I'm going to talk about today uh, going to be helpful for people, you know? Uh, and, and, it, and it should be, you know, I figure that out by first, if it's helpful for me, and then I kind of share that. But those questions, you know, um, everyone wants to feel more alive. They all want that. They all need that. You know, people, you talk about businesses and it's like, well, everyone needs, you know, uh, healthier options for dairy products or, you know, but, but across the board, Everyone wants to feel more alive. And, and this is what we have to understand as artists. This is, this is the audience. And our art isn't going to, uh, you know, connect with everyone. But this will increase the likelihood that others will come, that people will see this and be moved by it. And that's so, so important. Um, and that they are looking for that, you know? They're looking for, uh, they see your work and, and they wanna know more. Tell me how you made this. What's in this for me? Tell me something about what you're making. Share with me what you're doing. Was this hard? Are you like me? Did, you know, like the story behind your artwork is so important because it gives people more. So just holding those two points, um, now when we, I'll, I'll, let's, let's revisit those points that my friend and I had on that walk. And, 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 it, and because of these two points, answers, different kinds of answers come as a result. So the first uh, was around galleries. And, and he, he was sh sharing that, um, they're not taking submissions at this time. And he, he kind of stopped. He's like, you know, no galleries, they're just full or they don't want any work. And, um, and, and we can stop there. But that's where this whole idea of everyone wants to feel more alive, including gallery owners. This is their business. They can't resist it. So a better question is, you know, how can I use my creativity um, to, to engage with this gallery ownership, with the owner of the gallery? I remember uh, I had a gallery in Santa Fe and I was visiting them and she was showing me the shoe boxes full of postcards, uh, the small uh, postcards that get every week um, of artists looking for representation. It was, I couldn't believe it, dozens a day. And they weren't, you know, maybe they look at them for a second, but it was just pretty not such interesting work. They're all these cheapy postcards and there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And this, these artists are trying to entice the gallery owner to call them up or to represent their work. And, and, and it was just doing it, in order to do this properly, you need to do something that's different, you know, think of it more, you know, how can I give them something that is going to be memorable if they're just sitting in their gallery and they get the mail every day and this is what comes, how can I do something? How can I use my creativity to show my work or to show my creativity that wakes them up, that is going to be different? Because 
I promise you, that person, if you were sitting in a gallery all day long and you, you know, it's kind of slow and people come in and out of the gallery and there's not much going on, the looking, getting something in the mail that's interesting absolutely will stand out and you will open it, I would. Everyone's looking to improve their business and this, I, the reason that these, you know, we're not open to submissions is because it's like, it's like that's the first barrier. Don't even go that way. It's like, don't even submit. The whole idea of, I'm gonna submit something to a gallery. It's like, share your enthusiasm of your work. Um, share your enthusiasm of the gallery if you think it's a great fit. You know, do something different. The answer to this is everyone's looking for business. Everyone's open to this. They're all, no, no one's immune. No one, no one is left out of this. They all are moved um, by something that, is, uh, that brings them alive. So you get to do your homework and, and do, dig deeper into some kind of way, something that shares what you're doing uh, in, in some way that you can send or, or share with a gallery. Um, but don't try and go through the front door. It's already kind of, the door's locked anyway. I disagreed with him and just said, dude, you just have to choose the places you want to focus on and then really focus on it and go for it, you know? Do something amazing. Spend three hours on something and really deliver something cool. It's about using your creativity and, and that's what we're good at. And so that kind of, this whole thing of, oh, there's so many artists and there's not enough galleries. Well, there's not a lot of people that are leveraging this idea. Um, and we need to do it in our work. We need to do it around our work and, and in our promotion of our work, and especially in getting people uh, enrolled in, in helping us uh, with, our, with our art. He shared something that was interesting to me. So he was saying, you know, he was kind of frustrated, and he was sharing the fact that the things that he did enjoy, you know, because I, I think I probably said, you know, well, what, what's working for you? And he goes, well, I'm loving doing these. He does these really cool books and uh, photography books. And, uh, and he was saying, I love doing them and I'm, I'm you know, really honing the craft here. And I've, I'm taking a, a, a amazing book that he had done previously and he was improving it and going to re-shoot uh, some of the things and, and, and get it stronger. And... But it was already really, really good. Um, and he felt like, well, that feels pretty good. And I, that's, I think, what I'm going to do. Instead of this thing of these gallery dead end, I'm just going to go back to my work and just focus on that, you know. And, and he really wants to get his work out there, you know. I share this with you because there's this tendency, uh, and I've had this, where we can... Uh, keep going back to our work and, and take something that's pretty good and, and make it even a little bit better. And we can always make our work better. And it's actually what we do. And it's easier uh, than going after external externalities like galleries and things, things that can really move the needle. Like taking your work from 93% good to 96% good is, is maybe it's going to make a little difference, but, but not as much of a difference as enrolling in somebody, let's say you wanted a gallery or something that could really move the needle, right? Like that's, so, but we can get embroiled uh, in spending all of our time working on our art and staying inside um, where it's safe right? It's harder to make a call. <laughs> it might take two minutes to make a call to someone who could really help you. You know, maybe it's an artist that you love their work and they're in a gallery, you can call them and you don't know them that well, but, um, you know, or go to an opening that's a drive away to meet somebody. You know, these are the things that can really move the needle in your art making, but we can spend all our time, um, almost postponing uh, these decisions, these, these harder things for ourselves to do that don't, we don't feel quite as comfortable. Because face it, we're all good at 
the thing we do. We're good, pretty good at making our art and, and always go back to that. I have so many artists I've met, they're like, I just wanna make the art and I'm just gonna hire someone to do all my social and do all the thing. And it's like, that person's not gonna come because they don't have your energy. Obviously you can get help, um, but you need to spearhead that. You need to get your arms around this, um, uh, this promotional thing. And for sure you get people to help you do it, but you need to really get comfortable with it and understand um, those points that I was making about, you know, you've got to come up with the idea of some cool way to promote yourself. This tendency to polish and repolish and polish and repolish something that thinking that it's going to make a big difference, uh, just be wary of it. Be wary of the fact that maybe um, you doing what I did for too long, postponing, I did this, I, I wanted a really big studio and I wanted not a really big studio, I just wanted a studio, a big studio to work in. And it was a giant move for me. And I kept saying to myself, you know, when my work's better, when I have these galleries, um, then I could get, a, 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 you know, that makes sense, right? And I kept waiting and kept waiting. And it was actually the studio that was, um, once I got it, that made everything possible. But you can see how, you know, being kind of uh, relying on something, you know, holding back a little bit um, instead of moving directly to some of the harder things in promotion we need to do, um, just take small bites of it, but you, it's gonna feel different than your art. It's, it, but we want to recognize in these, in these small steps that it, it's related to art making, just like when we're trying something new, when we're using a different color, when we're doing something that we haven't done before, you know those experiences. That's promotion, it has that aspect to it. And we wanna take those bites, we, we need to do that. So especially if you don't have a lot of time, you know, what, what things can you do that are really gonna move the needle? And if, if, you, <laughs> if you tend to just kind of keep going back, thinking that your work needs to get better and better, it has to be so good in order for these things to happen, in order for you to do these things or ask for, for help or to show your work or that that somehow is what's holding you back, I think it's really cool to, to think again about that. The third thing we talked about uh, was audiences. And I thought this was really interesting um, that people who follow you um, are not, uh, it's so easy to follow people. You just click a button and you think, oh, well, I have this many followers and that, that somehow that is going to, um, you know, help me sell my work. and. And you know he he's doesn't have a ton of people yet, and <clears throat> but and and the and and the idea floating around was that this doesn't totally work. You know, it's like someone can like you and follow you, and you can have all these followers, but when you offer your painting out there, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it someone's going to buy this work. And at least that hasn't been his experience. It is a giant step for someone to be following your work and look at it and then um, purchase something to actually call you up or to, you know, like that's, that's, that is an amazing thing that can happen. And obviously the more people uh, that are following you, the likelihood for that to happen is greater and everything. But I kind of frame it more the way I think about it is that, you know, people um, uh, tend to go deeper with you, whether it's buying art or listening to you or sharing things that you've done or talking to you or whatever, if they, um, if they know you um, and if they like that and they trust you, right? And so in your social, in what you're doing in your, on, all, on whatever platform you're, you're wanting to do, um, you're wanting to um, 
share what you're doing. And it has to be, it doesn't have to be, but I think it's important to filter down what the things are. Again, back to this point, you know, what it is that brings you alive. That is uh, so powerful, <laughs> first of all, because you have more energy for it, and it usually is your better work, and it usually is what others will find interesting. You first have to, around this whole follower thing, it's like you've got to be a really great follower of yourself. You, you, have, to, you have to connect to yourself first, um, and, and it has to be truthful. And, you know, I, I don't know about other ways of advertising or whatever, but I know that if, if I'm talking about something right now, and, and I've thought a lot about this, and it interests me, and it's been really helpful, and this is something, there's energy for this conversation. It isn't something I'm faking. It's something that I care about, and people listening, some can feel that. So whatever it is you're promoting, you are, you are putting something out that you are, that circles around the idea of this is something that kind of lights me up. And sharing why that is and sharing the challenges of making that thing um, and, and how you did it and why you did it and the journey of, you know, that's really powerful uh, for people who are following you. Again, what's in it for people following you? They too are struggling, just like all of us, in, in keeping moment, momentum and looking for things that like light them up and make them feel inspired. And that's, the, that's, that's what you're involved in doing. And you're just sharing those things that do this for you. They're part of that conversation. They're, they're looking to you for that. That's what they're coming from. When you know what people are coming for, that should prompt you to be more vulnerable with this, to be more yourself. The reason I say vulnerable is because when you share truthfully what it is that um, matters to you, because possibly others won't agree or you might not say it right, but if it matters to you, if it really matters to you, if the art, you know, over my shoulder, really I care about it, it's a little scary to um, have it out in the world to say I made this because maybe somebody might not like it or it's, it's showing yourself. Authenticity is what people are coming for. They're looking for it themselves and they're craving to experience this in the sharing that, you, uh, that you're able to give over social media or any kind of media or talking about your work, also your work, the willingness to share what's truthful has a direct relationship to the numbers of people who follow you, the people who are engaged. People tend to, uh, tend to want to um, spend more time with you and learn more. And, and certainly for me, you know, with Art to Life and uh, all the programs and everything we teach, this is, this is what we're doing. We're, we're showing people uh, ideas of what's possible. And, and then some people, a small fraction of those who listen, um, want to go deeper and want to learn more. And, and that is cool. That's how we exist as an entity. You know, that's what Art to Life is doing. We're helping people um, find their authenticity through art. And the reason that it's so powerful uh, making art from that place is because it makes amazing art that's totally different. And the world soon hears about it because it's really easy to promote that kind of work. So just thinking that, oh, well, followers aren't really, you know, you can, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. It has nothing to do really with the numbers. I mean, obviously, if you have a gajillion 
it's, it makes a difference. But it has to do with what you're sharing. It has to do with how engaged people are. You know, it's got to be real. It's not something you can just, it's not a game. It, this isn't a game. This is based on human beings uh, inspiring each other. I love this idea because it takes the mystery out of it, you know? Like, I know that people, you know, will share something and they'll get like a bazillion followers, but we're kind of involved in, in, in we're putting out something, you know, that feels like ourselves. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of hacks and all kinds of things you can do. And I don't know, I, I'm not really talking about that. I'm just talking about the slow and steady build of your energy and, and attracting people who are interested in it, like you, who love what you're making, that, that it somehow gives to them some of the feelings that you get from it. And that's super solid, you know, just having people who get to know you, um, who they, tr they trust you because it's consistent. You're, you're making something that you care about. And at the end of the day, that's what people want to feel. They want to peer in and understand, it's like, wow, what, how are you doing this? And what, what lights you up? And, you know, so I hope you can see how this whole mysterious world of business and promotion kind of comes back to the same essential ideas that art making uh, does. It's the basis of what fires you up you know, what brings you alive, how that, I hope that you can understand how that relates um, in a broader sense to not just art and life, but, but specifically business and promotion. I hope that was helpful. And uh, I really super appreciate you being here. On Sunday, we have, uh, we send out this vlog. It comes out every week. If you're interested in getting it, I'm teaching things. We're in conversation with a big community of artists, uh, people sharing ideas. Um, and I would love for you uh, to join, join us if, if you're interested. It's free. All you have to do is go to, um, artlifeplay.com to sign up and um, look forward to seeing you there. Okay, thanks so much, you guys.